We believe that wealth is a journey and that this is your jumpstart to trading success. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Traders Mind Chat Show. I'm Mike. I'm Melissa. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about something that many of you may not even realize is important to trading. <laughs> I didn't know it was important to trading until I wrote this book with Mike, the Mara Mind Shift Guy. I realized, like, wow, this is freaking crucial to trading. It's your trading beliefs and why they could be impacting your trading. So that's what we're going to be ch talking about. Because, uh, Mike, uh, yeah, what's the first thing or why is it even important? So, yeah, like, well, why are trading beliefs important? Like, it's important. Uh, like, it's basically your operating system, right? Like, so uh, let's say, like, you're here on your computer. Like, it it, it can't function. Like, you, you wouldn't be able to watch this without your without an operating system running in the background, right? Like, organizing, like, linking this to that. That's what our belief system is. Um, and if we have a belief system that is leading us away from what our goals are or that are it just generally not leading us to the result that we want then that means that there's something in our belief system that needs to be looked at yeah right? like a lot I, of us are running on autopilot that's what i realized and through all this research and understanding of how beliefs work that a lot of us don't even realize that what is uh, programs within us in our subconscious or maybe like certain decisions we've been making our whole lives we had no idea why did we keep making those same mistakes or keep making these same type of decisions over and over and over again and a lot of that could be st stem from beliefs and what you grew up with uh, yeah like you got a an owner's manual for your computer but nobody gave us an owner's manual for your life <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. like where is that i'm still waiting for that and so it's basically up to us to come up with uh, like what well, what's like what's going on uh, up here, right? And so that, it's that's scary. Sometimes it's scary. No one really wants to really know. Sometimes like what really is going on upstairs. So uh, well, I mean, uh, there, there's a lot to uh, to unpack well, with that. <laughs> um, the, well, no one which knows way what's should going we? On in here. <laughs> yeah. Well, which way should we? <laughs> Oh, where do we want to take this conversation? Uh, uh, but back to yeah, um, back to the belief. So, well, you're, you, how do you then program? Like, if you don't have this owner's manual, this program. So, how do you start to unpack what is, um, what is, what are your beliefs? Uh, uh, first, you, you need to, to ask yourself, well, what are your beliefs? Exactly that question, right? Like, well, what are my beliefs? Uh, but like, if you just say that, like, there's literally like thousands of them like running in the background so it, so you want to be a little bit more targeted so what are my beliefs about trading mm -hmm. right like that you'll be able to come up with a still a sizable list but it's better than just saying like blanketly like what do i believe then like you could start talking about god religion family like whatever but what are my beliefs about trading and then very closely linked to that are what are my beliefs about money start there start mm -hmm. writing them out and you could come up with a couple of hundred just simply from from those questions um but but start with that uh, i would say to try to come up with, with uh, at least like come up with start with writing out 20. i think 20 is a is a good number and uh, plan to sit out to sit at a desk for give yourself half an hour Right? like uh, you might struggle to get to, to 10 uh and then like in like just sitting there like uh, you probably start writing out more and then like you, you'll find that well like it, i got to, to 50 or i got to 100 as you, you keep on writing them and this is an important point that um one of the, and this is all also in the mara mind shift guide to have on gotten your copy make sure you pick it up at amazon i'll have a link at the bottom of in the show notes uh, so it really will help guide you but it's super important to actually write this down like don't just do in your head oh i believe money grows on trees and all this stuff you know and and you're not actually writing it down and doing that deeper analysis because it, sometimes hmm. it's very true yeah. when you just do in your head well, you might just be able to do like two or three then you get move on you get distracted so if you really set that time aside to work on this to work on this for you because this is really going to help you in the long run it's more that like all, all that is true but well what's it, even more than that is what if it's just inside your head then you're still identifying well with those beliefs that like these are my beliefs right like and it like so uh, the ego is attached to it it's a lot easier ego, easy ego. <laughs> it's just an ego <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> You're right, the ego. It, the ego. So when you take it out of your head and you put it onto the page, then it makes it a lot easier to come back later on and uh, assess this thing that's out here, right? Like it's not in you anymore, right? It's not up here, it's, it's out there. So now I'm assessing something that's outside of me. So you're able to uh, look at it detach more objectively. Yourself yeah, from it. yeah, like literally detach mm. yourself. Like uh, you can become very defensive, thinking it's my belief, my family, my my religion, my. So then you become very defensive. But you're right. Like once you put it out there, say this is no longer my. This is just a belief I have. Then you can really start to dissect that. Right, and uh, is any belief like really your belief or is? That, right, like, like, are you the only one that's ever had this belief? Right, like, uh, how how people, many other but people fight over beliefs, people and, and relationships over beliefs, like beliefs, like you said, when that... you think that it's my beliefs, like you can feel very strongly about it and not want to change it, even yeah. if you might know that it, it is is something that you shouldn't be still holding on to. Well, that that's why we want to, uh, like, step one is really taking all of it. Uh, or as much of it as we can, putting it uh, into the physical world, then we can look at it, observe it, and then uh, look at it from a reference of, okay, is this leading me closer to or further from what I want, mm. right? But when it's all up here, it's hard to make that kind of a judgment because we're still holding on to the beliefs as uh, and possessing them as our own. When it's out here on a on a page, then it's a lot easier to be objective about it. Ah, so let's just say your goal is you really want to succeed at trading and you want to make money from this. Like that's your goal, but you start realizing as you're putting things down on paper that a lot of these beliefs or things that you've been doing are opposite of, of that particular goal, or maybe it's conflicting with, um, with succeeding at trading. Right, well, so you might have a, a belief that's in direct conflict with your goal. You might have a couple of beliefs that individually would lead you to your goal, but those two beliefs are in conflict with one another, mm -hmm. right? So you, um, let, let's see, an example of that might be that you believe that you need to buy low and sell high, mm -hmm. right? Um, that, that That's fairly common for people uh, starting out uh, in trading. But then the, you might uh, come across uh, some of my content and say, no, like buy high and sell higher, right? So if you have the, this uh, idea of like, oh no, no like I should uh, be buying low and selling high and uh, like then somebody else comes along and you're studying something and you have this other conflict in belief, you, you might start buying when you should be selling or selling when you should be buying it and like, of wondering why mm -hmm. well if you take the time to write out all the different beliefs that you have um and not just uh yeah like to actually sit there for a little while because if something's like deep in your subconscious it'll take a little bit to come up so one of the things that you might write out is like oh i took this course for mike he said to uh buy high and sell higher or, or like get your basically buying a breakout near a 52 week high and then riding a, a trend that that's not buying low and selling high, right? Like buying low means like you're looking at stocks that are beaten up near a 52 week low and then trying to, to, to sell it higher at some of the point. Wow, uh, that's a great example. I was also just thinking right now, like how like I grew up was that you need to get a steady job. You need a, a nine to five, you need something, you need benefits. And then um, a conflict of belief is becoming an entrepreneur and <laughs> doing what we're doing. And like how those were at odds with each other, they were in direct co conflict because this is not a steady job. There isn't a steady income, like it's constantly changing. So it is like a, a, a deep down belief. What I grew up with uh, was that I need to get a steady job, make sure I have a steady income so I can support my family. And those were in direct conflict. So a lot of people might be facing this as traders that they maybe want to trade full time, but they still have this belief that they still need this steady job, need a steady income. And so that could be causing issues with trying to get to that, that end goal. Yeah, I think that there's a, a lot of suffering when there is uh, these internal conflicting beliefs uh and a, a great way yeah a great way to 
reconcile many of them is through journaling, right? Because uh, like if you have internal conflicts, let the internal conflicts become external conflicts, and then it makes it easier to uh, be an intermediary for yourself. That's great. And something that has helped me um, is something just doing a stream of consciousness. Like to maybe start with a question, like always says, start with a question and you'll get um, the answer, right? Yeah. Um, so, and then maybe start a question and then just let your subconscious write and just don't even think, don't let your thoughts, you know, dictate what you're writing, just write and th things will come out that you weren't even aware of. So I think that that's a great exercise. If you haven't tried that before, just give yourself 10 minutes and just see what comes out. And it may shock you that maybe like your goal was not really that particular goal or maybe um, like I said, a belief that you've just had buried so deep in your subconscious, you didn't even realize that some particular memory or something a family member had said or a friend had caused you to think a certain way for so long that you didn't even realize it. Yeah, that, that's a great exercise. Yeah. Is that something that they taught you uh, as, uh, as a writer in... Uh... Yeah, it was actually um, um, a book I had read about a um, morning... It was almost like morning meditation. And that was one of the things that they had recommended um, was to do the stream of consciousness and just write for like, yeah, I think she said, like, try to do like three pages and just see how far you get. Like, you don't have to go like hold yourself to three yeah. pages, kind of just like see what happens. And uh, it was really, yeah, it was really therapeutic and it was it really eye opening at times. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Got to add that to the list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bonus section for the next book. I love it. Yeah, they... <laughs> I love it. We'll, we'll go tell Kevin. <laughs> we have a new chapter. All right. Anyway, so now we have the beliefs. We have a uh, better understanding of what those beliefs are. So how do we, like we mentioned the, the part about letting go. Like how do you let go of some beliefs that aren't serving you anymore? Uh, so, well, it, you need to be clear on the goal first, right? Like so that, that presumes that you, have, uh, that you have clarity on your goal and that you've written out your beliefs and you're starting to say that, okay, now I'm making this assessment. Uh, like I'm here. I want to get over here. How do I bridge the gap between here and here? Mm -hmm. Right. And the bridge is going to be the belief system, right? Like, so is this belief system going to get me over here? Well, this belief, that belief, yes, this one, maybe this one, not so much. All right. So this one, that's not so much. Uh, can I let this belief go? Right. And so now you're asking a question of this belief that is not in here anymore. It's not internal. Now it's a uh, external. Yeah, so uh, then you're able to uh, to say, well, yes, I can. It, you'll either be able to say, yes, I can let go of this belief or no, I can't. Well, if the answer is no, I can't, then the question becomes why? Maybe it's serving you in some other way. Mm. Uh, maybe it's linked to some other belief that you have, right? Like maybe you paid a lot of money to acquire that belief and there's a sunk cost that's associated with it you don't want to let it go for that reason maybe uh you know you got this uh belief about money let's say like you have a limiting belief about money uh, that uh, came from a parent and if you uh let go of that belief then that means that you are you know not honoring your mother or father and then that's tied to uh you know, religious belief so you're starting to kind of go down that, that trail of seeing like okay how what do i need to do to reconcile these types of beliefs so that way i could get into alignment to go uh straight away toward my goal so it sounds like this isn't just like oh i'm just gonna scratch it off the the pain now i'm done i let go it sounds like this is a much bigger process yeah the, the, this isn't you know like okay i watched one show and i'm good to go like <laughs> it, it, it yeah like the, this well, is some, an exercise some of those might be easier to yeah, some of them will, than others I right think that's probably like, even after today you might be like oh like maybe this one belief oh i didn't even know i had mm. i now can move forward from that one but you're right some of these more deeper and that's true uh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so like, the, if, if we consider it, ourselves a tree, now we're looking at the roots of like, this is what we grew up with. Like, that's going to be tougher to just cut off. Right. Like uh, in the journey of life, like there's a, there'll be like a lot of little pebbles uh, along the way. Right. Like, and so maybe we get a pebble on our shoe and that, that's pretty easy to, to just you know empty out. And there'll be plenty of those kind of pebbles. Uh, and like, so those limiting beliefs uh, that you come across like yeah like uh, you could just get rid of those 
every once in a while, like you'll, you'll come to, uh, you know, a large rock in the middle uh, of your of your path. And that, that'll be a little bit more difficult to, to, to handle. So you could try to lift the stone at, out of the way. You could try to go over it or around it. Uh, but there are ways around this larger uh, stone or belief. Like it doesn't need to stay in your way. Um, can you give an example of one that you were able to let go of? Oh, no, there's a uh, first one that, that's come to, to mind that, uh, that I uh, let go of, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of come up in other ways, goes back to a uh, sense of worth, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, to go uh, like for, from childhood, right? Like, so, um, yeah, well, like well, when everything... Uh, kind of happened uh, early on, and so uh, like that. This is a another tangent uh, of a story, but sure, no, this is important. <laughs> yeah. and, and sometimes these things are get deep, and it's hard. But I think it's important to be able to share. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it it goes back to um, well, when uh, my parents uh, divorced uh, uh, when I was uh, when I was young, um, and. Uh, one of the things that uh, led to uh, poor self-worth for years was that um, after uh, I, the, my parents split and I was living with, with my mom and uh, uh, my mom and my stepdad, well, we ended up becoming homeless for a, a period of time. And then my dad came out, came out to get me um, I, and I was living with him. Uh, there was supposed to be uh supervised visitation uh with my mom i'm fast forwarding a little bit but there was supposed to be this supervised visitation with her and uh so she never showed up to the supervised visitation and i was like really gung-ho about seeing her and uh and there's you know, something with the pebbles right you had to put the pep like number of pebbles in yeah yeah so um and so to go a little deeper into that story, uh, we, uh, oh, like they had uh, me and a lot of our other kids a uh, similar age of, at the time we were probably about, uh, say, nine or, or ten. Uh, what they did was uh, they brought all of us uh, into a room that would be uh, in this supervised visitation. And uh, they said, oh, okay, exercise, you're going to fill this jar with marbles, and each marble represented a different feeling. And blue happened to be uh, for happiness, right? So I start gathering all the blue marbles uh, that I could find, and they're like, wow, kid, like, you're, you're really happy. And uh, they said, yeah, I am. Well, why? Oh, well, I'm seeing my mom today. And so uh, I keep on filling the marbles, filling the marbles. Then it came time to for all the kids to go meet with their their parent um, for visitation and everybody got up except for, for me. And the reason why was because she never showed up. Uh, that happened uh, three more times and uh, then we, we just stopped going. Uh, so that, it, that like I didn't really understand it at the time as a kid but it started to make me question my my own self-worth and like am i worthy of love like am i worthy of like a accomplishment like uh, like i would you know have trouble finding uh fulfillment uh in things that like uh, like i would achieve uh a bunch of different things right like i would uh, you know you know like go to state championships for speech and debate, to run marathons, uh, like it, all these different things, right? Like uh, you've been here, like uh, you've seen like, uh, like different accomplishments, but like even like, like while we were uh, like that, that you saw, like there was the kind of uh, a little bit of emptiness back then because uh, I still wasn't fully aware of what I was dealing with from, uh, you know, from the lack of self 
worth it and, and those things or lot, like not making the connection that like oh like the reason why a lot like i'm struggling with uh self-worth is stems back to the that childhood trauma so continuing continuously trying to like achieve or overachieve was some kind of your way of trying to prove your worthiness right like so to prove my worthiness to uh to her to myself or uh yeah so how did you finally uncover that and how did you find a way to let go or are you know in the process yeah of it, go? it's you know it's a, an ongoing process too lot like i went to uh tony robbins event unleash the power within he had a very powerful uh exercise um that we actually talk a little bit about in the book and the this dickens process of uh you know you, know, you identify uh, like the this boulder right uh, like to bring it back to the conversation earlier like so there's this boulder that's in your uh in your path uh how are you going to get rid of this thing the his uh, exercise was a Dickens exercise where you you're clear on your goal um, you see the this thing that's holding you back and it's up to you if you want to continue carrying this uh, limiting belief with you or not right like uh, you have the power to leave the past in the past right like uh, you don't have to continue carrying it for forever so uh, the visualization process, which he called the Dickens exercises, uh, you know, we're, we're all familiar with uh, that story of Christmas Carol mm -hmm. and being visited by three ghosts. Well, what happens if you continue to hold on to this limiting belief that you have uh, for another year? Right? Like, well, what's going to happen to your goal? What's going to happen uh, if you continue holding on to this for another five years? How about another 10? How about another 20? And like, you're going through the this this exercise where well, we did that for like a solid like maybe 45 minutes or so and uh, like yeah it's a it's making the limiting belief so excruciatingly painful that like you have like it you kick it kicks in the that fight or flight uh where it's just like i cannot hold on to this anymore so great like it, you kind of like slingshot yourself forward then uh after that process it's like okay well, like well, we're now in a state where we're comfortable letting go of this giant boulder that we've been carrying around for however many years now uh, we can't just like say hooray we're done like like we need to put something in its place right like it's just like if you have a garden and you pull out the weeds like you need to put something else there otherwise like anything can grow in its spot maybe it's another weed maybe it's you know, like we want to be intentional about what we're going to plant there. So um, for me, in that case, um, it, yeah, and that this might be something that I need to go back and revisit and start to, to plant something else there. Because, uh, yeah, like I'm still kind of grappling with that a little bit. Part of what I was dealing with back then that we didn't talk about was, uh, well, when I, uh, so this is like a subsection to, <laughs> to the story, like, like you know it, but, but uh, they probably don't know it yet. Uh, so um, after, the, the, my mom and I didn't talk for, for many years um, after, uh, like, a, uh, really like between like 10 and uh when i was getting ready to graduate high school and then like i get this uh this letter in the mail uh, that says uh, like i'm going to be at your graduation uh, and uh you know like I, I get that letter and i write back well where the hell have you been for the past 10 years <laughs> like, like, like uh just like so upset a lot like i said like a lot of things that uh yeah like uh, i uh, regret saying um but but you were angry. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and then later on, uh, yeah, like, so uh, we had words where we, uh, she didn't come to the graduation and she uh, thought that I hated her. And uh, yeah, at the time, like, I, I uh, yeah, like, I don't know if that's a true statement, 
But uh, but yeah, like uh, at the very least, uh, like uh, very very angry. Uh, uh, so then later on, uh, after we met, right? Like uh, we started dating. Um, you know, like after I had graduated college, you were getting ready to graduate college, and I told you the this story well with uh, my mom and everything, and you encouraged me to reach out to her and try to patch things up. And I uh, over time, was just like, all right uh it, like uh let me go uh, and do this uh and i reached out to her and found out that she died uh two years prior it's heartbreaking yeah. i remember oh my yeah that, that was yeah like, like I, I never felt so low right and uh, that she uh died now uh, probably thinking that i hated her right so yeah, no. like I, I'm getting emotional just like talking about this, but no. so part of what? Well, when I went to the Tony Robbins event, like I was still trying to grapple with that part of it, and so um, that was more the focus versus the um, the other part that we spoke about earlier about. Um, Believing in myself and yeah. uh, and uh, self value, self worth, it and those kind of things. It was more about dealing with with that part of it, um, uh, and being able to be in a place where I could forgive myself for that because, I, like, I was just really blaming myself, it and uh, it like I was not able to um, fully function. Uh, so the belief that I ended up replacing, uh, so like, so I could have gone on uh, continuing to believe that like, uh, I'm a terrible uh, son, a terrible person for having told her that and now I can't go back and, and reconcile. Uh, I could hold on to that or uh, going through the Stickens process, uh, let go of that and replace it with something else, right? So at the time, what I ended up replacing it with was, uh, I'm the type of person that doesn't take shit from anybody. There were other things that kind of led up that we, that like, well, we don't need to discuss uh, every single thing, but there were other parts of it that were, that, yeah, that kind of led to me having that kind of a response uh, toward her. Um, so that was what you you pulled out those weeds, and now you had to replace it with something, and then this was what you were replacing it with. Right. What I ended up replacing it with, well, was something that could serve me, yeah. right? So uh, having a belief that says that I don't take crap from anybody uh, is uh, that's uh, an empowering belief. So that that was well, one of the things that uh, uh, that I ended up doing, mm -hmm. but there there were. Uh, yeah, like, so there, there's, there, so there, it, it's not just like one major boulder that might be in your path. Like you might have several, but this is the process, yeah. uh, right? Well, like, so understanding that, yeah, like you, you have this boulder in your path or you're carrying this boulder on your back. Uh, how are you going to get to your goal if you're constantly carrying this weight around with you? Right, like, won't it be more helpful to let this go? Right? Now, uh, well, sure, of course. Well, what's the process of letting it go? It's what we just said. Uh, and thank you for sharing, Mike. I'm gonna give you a hug because <laughs> I love you so much. And I know that's not easy. What you've gone through, what you're still going through, and like I said, this is some of this stuff. It, it, it's it's not an overnight thing. Like, it's it's gonna take time. I know you've gone through. A lot of beliefs exercise you've gone to tony robbins i know evan carmichael you went, went to his workshop so there's a lot of ways that you can not have to do this alone like you don't have to do this alone like there's uh, there's people out there that can help you along the way reach out to us one of the things we're looking to do is to create um um, a, a mind shift workshop, which would be great to have, you know, peers be able to help guide each other to get to the other side of that, to finally be able to either let go or replace it with the more positive and serving belief. So these are all things that are in the works because based on what, you know, Mike has gone through as well as what 
you know, we've all gone through something and or there, there is some belief that could still be holding us back from reaching our goals. So the most important thing is to find out what that is and how then you can get on the path to finding a way to uh, have better serving beliefs. So that's the, that's the goal for us at Mara and for you for your trading as well. So hopefully, not only over, we'll get the Kleenex so for yeah, right? everybody after this episode. Yeah, over there in the corner. Yeah. We'll have a drink after this. <laughs> <laughs> Right, or at least grab lunch. <laughs> at least grab lunch. But hopefully this episode has been good for you to hopefully have a better understanding of what those internal beliefs are for you to better serve you, to help you get to your trading goals. And wishing you much much success along your journey and hope you um, like this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and um, hope to see you soon. All right, yeah. Take it and run with it. <laughs> take it and run with it, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye.